Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Sheila Novak. I'm the Public Art Project Manager at the Rose Kennedy Greenway Conservancy. And I am so excited and grateful to welcome you to tonight's program, uh, Lantern Stories from Community to Creation with artist Yuen Wu. If you need interpretation services today, we are ex uh, providing Cantonese and or Mandarin interpretation. Both are available by clicking the globe at the bottom of your screen where you will see a English flag or, or sorry, a, a Chinese flag for Cantonese or a German flag for Mandarin. Unfortunately, Zoom does not provide more specific options. So our apologies for the inaccuracies in the language options. I also put that information in the chat um, and hope you see that there as well. Um, today I am joined by visual artist and interdisciplinary artist Yuen Wu. Yuen is working at the crossroads of art, science and politics and cultural issues. She was selected from a community-based process for this um, public art project um, and on a jury composed of Boston community members in the spring of 2019. Prior to her work at the Conservancy, Yuen served as the artist in residence at the Pow Art Center, where she engaged the Chinatown community and the general public with her project, Leavings and Belongings. She also presented a public artwork called With or Without Water in Chinatown in partnership with the Asian Community Development Corporation, the Pow Art Center, and residents of Chinatown. We're also joined today by Gina Ha, Gina is the program's manager at the Asian Community Development Corporation. As a member of the Asian CDC team since 2014, Gina leads their anchor placekeeping strategy, which she'll share more today, um, which equips residents and youth to shape policy planning and land use um, using arts and culture. Lastly, we're joined by Courtney Ho. Courtney serves as the engagement specialist for the city of Boston and previously served as the executive director for Chinatown Main Street. For interpretation services today, Melissa Lowe is providing Cantonese interpretation and Vanessa Wu is providing Mandarin interpretation. Today we'll be discussing the process of creating community-based public art and looking specifically at the context of Boston's Chinatown, where there's a vibrant history of community resilience and power in the public domain. Uh, my work as public art project manager for the Greenway Conservancy um, is within our public art program, which has paved the way for the Greenway to become a premier destination to see contemporary artwork in downtown Boston. The public art vision is to bring innovative and contemporary public art um, into the public space through free temporary exhibitions, engaging people in meaningful experiences interactions and dialogue with art and with each other. The Conservancy is the nonprofit that's responsible for managing the Rose Kennedy Greenway, a public park in the heart of Boston. We envision a vibrant, inclusive, and evolving public gathering space that offers healthy green space, fun, engaging and thought-provoking experiences, and a new ground for ideas. All of our public art is supported through private donations. And if you want to learn more, please visit our website, which is www.rosekennedygreenway.org. Um, and without further ado, I would love to just dive in um, to looking more intimately at our public art program in relationship with Chinatown, first by talking to um, Gina Ha. So uh, Boston's Chinatown is a community whose strong history uh, thanks, um, of grassroots organizing has led to consistent expressions of community power in the public realm. Gina, through your work at the Asian CDC, you have worked extensively with art-based placemaking and placekeeping efforts. How do placekeeping, placekeeping artistic and grassroots organizing efforts impact the Chinatown community. Thanks, Sheila, so much for that introduction and for having me on the panel. Hi, everyone. 
Um, so yeah, just like you said, there is a long, long history of Chinatown struggle as well as resilience and power. So for example, um, if you look at the Boston's red light district, the combat zone, that's what really made Chinatown unlivable. Um, it was seen as, um, yeah, like no one wanted to live there. There was a red light district, um, but a lot of residents, a lot of families and youth activists actually fought to make it livable. Um, now it's a hotspot. It's so livable that it's a hotspot. Everyone wants to live here. Um, and that's really leading to a lot of displacement and gentrification where families are getting, working class immigrant families are getting priced out of their homes. Um, and still we see a history of, and a current reality of organizing and power. Um, we see youth and resident activists actually using arts and culture to say we belong, we exist, um, we're here to stay. And they use murals like this and artwork to say even if um, we're getting priced out, we wanna say that this community, um, this, this space belongs to the community. So um, placekeeping really is an extension of organizing and community power. Um, and if you look at Chinatown now, um, Chinatowns across America really are, what, what folks say is Chinatowns across America are disappearing. Um, a lot of folks in Boston Chinatown will say, we don't wanna be like DC Chinatown, a skeleton of a Chinatown with a Starbucks in Chinese letters, but nothing really, nothing else really. Um, and so Boston Chinatown is no, no different. We're seeing our edges. Um, this is one version of a border in Chinatown and we're seeing the edges really eroding. Um, downtown creeping down, um, the highway coming through on the Eastern edge. And so what if we were to imagine as a community that we don't wanna fight to just exist and just stay and not shrink up. We actually want to say, we wanna expand. Like Boston Chinatown deserves to grow and thrive. That's really what Anchor is all about. Um, so with our placekeeping strategy, um, we, ACDC developed this anchor strategy to say, we really want to extend the cultural edges of Chinatown. And we've had some awesome partners in this. Um, one is you all, <laughs> the Greenway. Um, so there have been a couple of projects um, along the Eastern edge in particular. Um, and that space is Mary Sue Park. So we've had um, along the Eastern edge of Mary Sue Park, it's seen as not belonging to the community. A lot of folks, a lot of youth tell me, hey, that skate park is like so dingy or it smells like piss. And we have to say, oh, actually it's not even a skate park, it's a children's park. Um, and we worked with the Greenway to activate it into Satter Play. Another great collaborator was the POW Arts Center. Um, POW Arts, working in collaboration with artists and residents, um, we launched a program called Residence Lab, where we took another lot also known as the piss lot. There's a thread here of like urine or something. Um, also known as a piss lot. And we took that a vacant lot and turned it into a space where the community can reimagine. So there was um, games, there was art, there was um, examples of community dreams in public physical manifestation. Um, there were benches, places to play. Um, in this one slide on the top left, uh, youth got to say what Chinatown means to them and why it's an oasis to them. And so this was a project through Residence Lab in collaboration with three awesome artists, um, groups, and POW Art Center. Um, and, and this is just a, an example of how placekeeping has grounded us. Um, and, and this is what UN's awesome piece with you all is adding on to in our history. Thank you so much, Gina, for sharing some of the history of community engagement and activism in the public realm. If you joined late, interpretation services are available through the globe icon on the bottom of the screen. The Chinese flag is Cantonese interpretation and the German flag is Mandarin interpretation. I also put that information in the chat. Um, so in this context of creative 
place-based engagement. Um, the Greenway in 2018 began working through our public art program and in partnership with our Chinatown partners to envision a method of creating a public art piece that would work with a broad cross-section of the Chinatown community, putting curatorial and conceptual power into the hands of community through artist selection with a community jury um, and through an artistic process that centered community storytelling. One of our main partners in this process has been Chinatown Main Street. Uh, and in our work with Chinatown Main Street, we identified an existing installation of lanterns that had been put in the public realm for a number of years. So now I would like to move to uh, Courtney. Courtney, um, through our partnership with Chinatown Main Street, we devised a vision to invest in this existing public space installation of lanterns over Chin Park. Historically, how has this lantern installation and its associated festival created space for community joy, belonging, and cultural expression for Boston's Chinatown community? Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, everyone, for joining and tuning in. Um, I'm Courtney Ho. I'm the former executive director of Chinatown Main Street, um, where we worked to uh, promote Chinatown. Um, the festival came along where we wanted to celebrate um, more culturally on mid-autumn festival. Um, and we thought that, you know, lanterns would be a wonderful addition to bring more light into the Chin Park. Um, so we started this five years ago, uh, just basic street festival type uh, with martial arts, lion dances, you know, just to engage more people to promote Chinatown and local businesses. Um, we were working tirelessly to obviously promote the Chinatown community. Um, lanterns are a symbol of um, celebration, uh, bright futures, you know, red symbolizes happiness, gold symbolizes celebration. So with all these colors, we thought um, this would be a perfect piece to add to our festivals. And we created the Lantern Festival with all the lion dance, folk dance, martial arts, singing, and so much more in efforts to keep, you know, making Chinatown, Chinatown. Okay, that's And Thank you so much, Courtney. I really appreciate the fact that Chinatown Main Street has been working to have a place keeping effort. So um, if it wasn't clear, Chin Park and the Greenway are on the, on the eastern edge of that border region that Gina shared. And Chinatown Main Street and Courtney's uh, organization at the time developed this lantern installation on that eastern edge. So with that context, the Conservancy, uh, in partnership with our Chinatown organizations and friends, worked to develop a public artwork that would help build that anchor strategy. Through a, communi through a community jury, uh, we selected Yuen Wu. Um, as the public artist for this project. Uh, you went, as part of the project, we required you to work with a community to realize the conceptual and aesthetic uh, concepts for this project. Can you share with us how you went about the process of engaging with the community and how the last few months has influenced your project? You and you are muted. Okay. Well, I just want to thank everyone uh, joining us today, and um, you know, just 
uh, enjoying this and listening to this presentation. Um, I want to thank the Rose Kennedy Greenway Conservancy and the Chinatown community for the opportunity to create this outdoor public artwork. I'm honored to be selected um, as the artist for this project. I've continued, uh, this is, I've worked on two previous projects with the Chinatown community, and I feel really privileged to continue working with this community. So last year, about this time, I was commissioned by the Greenway Conservancy and representative members of Chinatown to do a light-based um, public artwork for the Greenway. Um, here's an aerial view of the location where the installation will take place. It's at Chin Park. And for anyone not familiar with the plaza, it's located um, at the side of the main Chinatown gates. The site of the light-based installation is outlined in red, and it's also the site of the Lantern Festival each year. And here's an image from last year's Lantern Festival that Main, uh, Main Street Chinatown put together and the and park as it was this weekend. Do we miss a piece? No, I think the slide advanced prematurely. Okay, okay. Well, uh, let's go back a little, okay. Um, so, to the next slide. Oh, okay. Well, well moving forward, um, in my public artwork uh, approach, um, I have several uh, parallel processes uh, in any outdoor public art project, um, there are many considerations. And from the weather to materials and budget and the community's use of the space. I begin by multiple site visits where the artwork will live. And I think about how and when and who uses the park. I have, um, a, uh, sat in the park for many hours and watched the flow and interactions of people throughout the day. I want to pause here a little bit and just go back to the previous slide. Here we go. So um, part of the research that I do is that I uh, visit um, I meet with residents and businesses and community leaders and attend community meetings to hear um, public issues and, and concerns. Okay, next. Awesome. Thanks, Yuen. And sorry about those technical issues. Um, we did lose a picture of the <laughs> park. Um, unfortunately, you'll have to visit to see what it looks like right now instead of seeing it digitally. Um, so, so as part of the process of engaging the Chinatown community, we hosted a community listening session at the Pow Arts Center all the way back in February. And, and um, at that time, you worked to gather input from the community. Um, and I would love to hear more specifically about what some of that input was. We'll go to the next slide. So in early February, um, prior to lockdown, the Greenway and I hosted a three hour open listening session to hear the community's input um, on a series of questions that I posed. This was held at the Powell Arts Center um, and this was open to the Chinatown community and to the public. Questions were asked with answers written by participants on post-it notes um, I ask questions such as, and we'll just wait, we'll hold on on this. Uh, what does light mean to you? In what ways does Chinatown interest you? What does Chinatown mean to you? And what are your hopes for Boston's Chinatown? And do you have a poem or a quote that's memorable to you that you'd like to share? There were a lot of really thoughtful and meaningful feedback um, I'd like to share some, a few of these with you. For the question, in what ways does Chinatown interest you? Uh, a participant wrote, Chinatown is such a wonderful neighborhood in its community and culture. 
A lot of the community stems from the collective stories of immigration. It was built, um, it has built a sense of belonging that has lasted through history and to now. And to another question, what does Chinatown mean to you? Chinatown is a second home to me. My friends live here and the kids I taught live here too. It's where I used to live. I treasure this place for its comfort and culture. I'm glad this place exists. And what do you hope and wish for? In the face of gentrification, I hope that Chinatown is able to develop and grow in a way that allows families to still live and work and play in Chinatown. So in addition to the community, I sought out many one-to-one -one conversations as a touch point with different members of the community. I would like to share one of these conversations. I had the pleasure of speaking to Amy Chin Gwynn. Um, it's, she has a fascinating uh, story. Amy is the eldest of six Chin children and born in Boston. She and her siblings live for a period of time in China. Amy's daughter, Terry, writes, because of their education and as a bilingual speaker, they, were, they could understand the needs of both American born and Chinese and immigrant, uh, Chinese immigrants. As American citizens, they could organize on behalf of disadvantaged non-English speaking residents, elders, and neighbors of Chinese descent without the fear of deportation. Amy says, in my question, what does Chinatown mean to you? She said, it's my hometown. I belong here. I am proud because I am the third generation. To me, this is a very unique place that nurtured me. And to the question, what do you see and hope for the future of Chinatown? She says she and her family developed, as well as, as, well as others, developed social, economic, and medical organizations in Chinatown for the people. And she'd like to see it thrive and benefit for generations to come. Next. Thank you, Yuen, for pulling out those specific stories and sharing some of that work. Um, it's really wonderful to hear how people responded to your questions. Um, and I, with all of that information you pulled together, you were then charged with actually creating an artwork based off of those concepts and those stories and those histories. Um, and then in addition to this, since February, um, our world has um, both changed and inequities have been exposed in ways um, that have placed us in a heightened cultural awareness of white supremacy and racial inequities. Um, and so how have you created the design of your artwork to honor these stories and then also pivoted the design of your artwork in light of recent events? Yeah. Well, soon after the uh, February listening session, shelter in place due to COVID was implemented, but Chinatown was already paying the price in late January with businesses and restaurants beginning to see failing patronage and anti-Asian sentiments were aggressively rising and pervasive. And the killing of George Floyd occurred and this country's response was an enormous outcry. So my art installation Lantern Stories was conceived out of these current events of these unprecedented times and to reflect on what this means for the Asian community. Lantern Stories celebrates Boston's Chinatown history and community. Over 30 lanterns will be specifically created to illuminate the community's culture and resiliency during these challenging times and its enduring hope for the future. This particular drawing is, um, demonstrates the variety of shapes and forms to be made for this project. Um, these will vary in size from 12 inches to 30 inches in diameter. These lanterns will be wrapped with selected images. And some of these are photographs from the Chinese Historical Society of New England, others from public and private sources, and from artists and calligraphers of this community. The images on the lanterns tell many stories and transporting the viewer through history and current times. Um, lantern stories will represent certain historical landmarks. Chinese immigration to this country. 
is a long and fraught history of struggle against discrimination and social inequity. Logs of Chinese immigration began in the 1850s with the California gold rush and then the building of the transcontinental railroad. What followed was years of anti-Chinese sentiments that culminated in the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. And this in essence was the first wall, uh, wall formed by the United States and the first legislation against a certain group of people. Um, through many iterations of the exclusion, of exclusion policies, um, the repeal of the Exclusion Act and the signing of the Immigration and Naturalization Act of 1965 finally abolished the quota system of uh, immigrant entries. And this act came in no small part due to the civil rights movement. And here you see a, um, and we'll just uh, hold on a minute with the slides. And here you see um, uh, the support, uh, the Asian support um, of um, Black Lives Matter, and also a, um, a lantern that expresses the anti-Asian sentiments during the pandemic. This uh, banner declares, fight the virus, not the people. Um, and again, you see the solidarity uh, with Black Lives Matter. Okay, next slide. Other lanterns celebrate the people belonging in this community, from the garment workers to teachers, businesses and other industries, and to the residents that live and shape the community. Next. Lanterns celebrate the three perfections with art, calligraphy, and poetry. Next. And there will be representative lanterns celebrating music, performance, and festivals, and of course, food. Next. And included will be some of the community's words from the listening session and conversations that I've held with residents. Um, also to be included will be contributions of self-portraits from many of the youth programs with ties in various ways to this community. And in these multitude of lanterns, I hope to share this community's strong com commitment to art, education, entrepreneurship, and social justice. Thank you so much, Yuen. It's really incredible to see the sketches and to hear more specifically about every single lantern and how deeply they've really been considered in highlighting the histories, the present and the future um, of this neighborhood and community that we really cherish in Boston. Um, so, so now you've shown us all these wonderful sketches, but you have to actually then turn them from a kind of 2D idea on paper into a three-dimensional three -dimensional installation of lanterns that can hang above our heads. So how do you turn all of these ideas into artwork? Well, um, the next trick is, uh, is the fabrication. And that's, that's a magical step. And, and, and as you say, Sheila, it's, um, it's a really fun uh, process next to turn a, a, a drawing into a three-dimensional form. Um, I am working with Jaywalk and they're tremendous fabricators and we've been collaborating on ideas and how to make this happen. So here you see in our first meeting in my studio, um, you see a model of the park, which I confess I've spent many hours um, maneuvering the relationships of the different lanterns. Um, it was exciting to see the first template um, of the Sapirico lantern and testing its scale and its illumination. And then even uh, more fun, we went to the park and you see in the upper right corner, um, Jeff is holding up a 24 inch round sphere and we just wanted to see how it would live in this particular space. Um, and at the bottom right in the studio uh, of Jay Walk's studio, uh, here you see it being uh, a different template coming around. So, it's, it's really very exciting, and I'm looking forward to having the whole installation complete in September, early September. Yeah, so uh, 
our hope is with Jaywalk's help in the fabrication and UN guiding the process, early September this year, we'll be installing a series of lanterns that are created through a community process, through an artist selected by the community to share the stories of the community and to help anchor that Eastern edge of Chinatown. So when visitors and residents in the city come into the neighborhood, it is clearly marked as a space for the Chinatown community, for the Asian Pacific Islander community of greater Boston and the Northeast more broadly. Um, we will have this be a temporary public art installation as all of our public art installations are on the Greenway. Um, and the deinstallation schedule is tentatively November this year, uh, in large part due to the fact that the lanterns will not be able to hold the weight of snow and ice of a New England winter. If we get lucky and have a warm November, we could see an extended installation into December. If we're unlucky and we get snow in October, they might have to come down early. Mm -hmm. um, I hope not. But um, I personally want these up for as long as we possibly can have them. Um, and that is the majority of our presentation today. Um, please send in some questions. As you send in questions, um, we're actually going to open it up for a conversation with Gina and Courtney um, and you, Wen. I just wanted to see for, for you, when community members, when Bostonians, when visitors come into Chinatown and see this artwork, what are you hoping they will experience? Um, we'll start with you, Wen. Well, as Courtney has said, uh, lanterns represent light. And um, in this context, it really helps um, to lead the way to move forward um, towards a brighter future and pushing aside the darkness. So this project is really designed to live during the daytime as well as the nighttime. And when you first see this work, I really hope that you experience beauty. And at night, you experience the beauty of light, lighted lanterns. Um, and then as you draw closer, you appreciate the history of the people and the culture um, and, and, and that make this community extraordinary and resilient. Thank you, Yuen. Um, Courtney, can I toss it to you now? Oh, you're muted. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, what do you hope community members and visitors will experience when they view this artwork? Um, more visiting, fr more frequent visiting. Um, year after year, um, so far we've done the festivals for five years and we keep re revisiting the idea of how do we make it better? How do we engage more people to come into Chinatown? How do we celebrate better? How do we, how do we make it more fun than the last time? You know, just celebrating our culture, celebrating you know, our Chinese community, celebrating small businesses. Definitely. Our hope is that the artwork can, can support that. Um, and Gina, what do you think? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I'm, I really hope and I'm sure that with UN's art and all these stories, folks will feel so many things. Um, I think my personal hope is that they'll just really see themselves in the art. Like when you get to walk in a public space as large as the Greenway and say, hey, I see myself, like I, I see my literal self portrait here, or I see my grandma, I see a story that my uncle told me, um, and really feeling belonging. And I think that belonging, feeling safe in a public space is what will lend itself to more healing. Um, and yeah, healing and joy coming out of this season. So yeah, just seeing themselves. Mm. Thank you so much, Gina. I think that's a really beautiful vision 
for what public art can do and for public art that is made with the intention of celebrating the community that lives in a space can do to help in the effort of placekeeping. I've been using the word placekeeping a lot. If that's a confusing word for you, it is a creative endeavor intended to help support the place that people live and um, with the intention to push against gentrification. Um, so we have some wonderful questions coming in. Um, I'm going to ask them um, and hopefully direct them towards one or a couple or all panelists. Um, so first for you, when, what materials will the lanterns be made out of? Um, the, the, the forms themselves are a compressed uh, MDF type of wood. So they will be, uh, the, the fabricate, um, fabricators are designing different thicknesses to accommodate different sizes. And then the images will be printed on a, a kind of the outdoor fabrics that we have um, now focused on. And um, yeah, they will be wrapped and, and adhered around the, uh, the template and the different forms. Wonderful. Yeah, they should be resilient and durable in outdoor space. Yes, um, definitely will be. <laughs> um, while I have you, Yuen, um, Michelle asked, um, were you inspired by any artists or art pieces um, that made you want to create this art installation with lanterns? So maybe, you know, why lanterns? Why did you use that form? And then maybe some artists or artworks that influence your practice or your work? Um, you know, this was commissioned as a light-based artwork. And I did think a great deal about um, tapping into my video knowledge. I, I, I do use a lot of um, digital media in that way. But after really exploring and listening to the community, I just, it felt like it should be an honoring of tradition without exact replica replication. So I felt that I wanted to put the lanterns in there again and to represent it in a, um, in a way that was about story. And so that was really important. Um, also, there was just due to the weather and the um, viability of doing uh, projections for a long period of time, over three months, it just was not, it didn't seem plausible in this particular case and in this particular installation. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Um, now uh, for, for Gina and for Courtney, um, can you talk a little bit more about festivals in Chinatown and the importance of festivals to the Chinatown community and even potentially the Lantern Festival in particular? I'll let, I'll let Courtney go first. Lantern Festival queen over here. <laughs> <laughs> Lantern Festivals. Um, the importance of festivals, the importance of it um, with the culture. Um, we thought of hosting it closer to the Mid-Autumn Festival um, so we can celebrate um obviously the lantern so like i said so signifies you know chinese culture symbolism the celebration so we thought importance of having that community culture out there um for people to see so we try to bring in more foot traffic into the community through our festivals our street festivals and each time depending on weather, obviously it's different um, amount of people that come in, but every year we've gotten bigger and bigger. Yeah, and some of the, I'll just share a couple of stories that come to mind. Um, one is one of the youth that I used to work with, he's no longer a youth, he's so old. <laughs> he's gonna graduate college soon, but um, he was a youth in the program. Um, at Asian Community Development Corporation, it's called A Voice. He talked about how one of his favorite memories was the festivals in Chinatown, because when he first immigrated, that like, he came right um, at that month of that festival, and all he would see was like the lion dance and 
all the celebration and all the sense of community. And that made him feel like as someone who just came into Boston's Chinatown and came into America, this is a place where he can feel comfortable and feel belonging again. Um, and, and another story that um, a resident shared in the collaboration between artists, Power Arts Center and residents um, is that, is how important intergenerationally festivals have been. So um, the Lantern Festival, for example, um, a one resident shared how it'd be something that her kids would watch on YouTube and they would see the firecrackers on YouTube before they could actually see it in person because they were too scared. And then it became like a coming of age when they can come to the festivals and not be too intimidated by the lions and by all the color and the noise. And then it'd be something that they go with to their grandparents across the street that um, they live right across from the gate and they have like the same three soups every holiday season. <laughs> um, so yeah, just like it's so intertwined with family culture something that's so intimate in your private home and private spaces, out in public spaces. Um, so yeah. I just want to support what you said because um, in the listening session, many people mentioned exactly what you just said, Julie. I can't wait to see it, Yuan. <laughs> um, I, there's one question that came in from Danielle, um, which is what did the process of a community-led jury look like uh, and how was that organized and facilitated? Um, and that's a really great question. Um, it really pulls into the realm of public art. It's something I'll take. Um, and so I, given that this was a piece about community storytelling and about community authorship, it was important for us to ensure that the community had the curatorial power in determining which artist represented their narrative. So preliminarily, the Conservancy released a request for qualifications, which is basically an artist application where artists submit a statement of intent and a series of artwork samples um, and past work, as well as a resume and some references. We did not ask for proposals because we knew that the artwork needed to be developed through community process. So we simply wanted to hire an artist who would work with the community and had great intention to do so. And then developed a jury to sift through this pile of, uh, of applications that we received for this project. Um, and the community jury was selected through work with our Chinatown partners, identifying folks across a broad section of Chinatown organizations and community groups that could represent a broad spectrum of community voices. Um, and after sifting through all of these applications, a few artists' names rose to the top. Um, and we debated internally and ended up through that process, um, UN really floated, floated to the top um, of the group in large part due to her work with the Chinatown community previously, as well as her clear intention to center the community story in her process. Um, so we were really heartened by the description that UN provided for how she would work. And then the jury um, looked at a ton of artists who were highly qualified um, and were really, really excited to work with UN. Um, okay, with that, uh, another question that um, I want to throw out um, to you, Wen. Uh, were there any stories that you heard um, in the listening session or in conversations with um, individuals in the community that resonated with you, resonated with you personally? Um. Well, there were several immigrant stories and um, as I came to the United States when I was about seven. And so there were a lot of adjustments and assimilations and, you know, working through identity and all the different things that uh, new immigrants have to face. And I have to say that um, in the process of, of listening to some people's um, parallel stories, there, there resonated for me a real, a real sense of resiliency and, and working through um, 
all the different issues that one faces in a new country. Um, so yes, and I wanted to make sure that this was conveyed in, in, in the lanterns and these stories were going to be conveyed as well. Thank you, Yuen. Thank you for sharing a little bit more of your story as well. Um, and uh, we're almost out of time, um, but one more question that came in, and, and frankly, there are so many good questions coming in. Thank you so much for everyone for submitting your questions. We will not be able to get to all of them. Maybe this is a good impulse for the Conservancy in partnership with UN to write a blog post or share some more of this this story and um, disseminate it because there's really um, a lot of interest and thank you so much. Um, so I, let's see, a, a final question. Um, Let me just hop in for a minute. I see um, some question that I could answer is that the, each of the lanterns will be documented and so that you will be able to go to the Conservancy site and find out more information and see the spe uh, specificity of each one um, in terms of uh, their, their, their specific information and links. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, and and the one final question that I um, would love uh, for Gina to answer is um, uh, how, how can visitors or people living in Chinatown, or maybe I'll throw it to all of you. Let's do that. I'm gonna throw it to all of you. Um, I think this is a great way to wrap up. Uh, how can visitors and people visiting or living in Chinatown um, help make a positive difference in this community? I can go. Just getting involved. Um... Follow us on social media, follow, you know, follow Chinatown Main Street, um, get involved with the community, get involved with any of the organizations that um, do placemaking, do help support small businesses, help support the Chinatown community and all the development and housing and all, everything. Just get involved with your local community, yeah. even if you don't identify as Chinese. There are, you know, all our neighbors, we're all neighbors together, so... Thanks, Courtney. Yeah, I can share. Um, I think it starts also with changing maybe our perception of ourselves. What I hear a lot working with youth and residents is, oh, I'm not the expert, or like that's the planner there with a master's degree in planning, or that's the artist who like really knows how to make art. And um, just shifting that power dynamic and seeing visitors, or and seeing especially the people who live here and the people who work here as that you really are the expert in the neighborhood. Um, and so, really taking up that space and then with that kind of attitude jumping into that public meeting or jumping into that um, community project that Courtney was talking about. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with both Gina and Courtney. Um, just being involved is really key and um, feeling that, um, you know, just linking and understanding uh, and reading more and understanding this community would be really a, a part of uh, linking all of our, uh, uh, all of us together. Yeah. Well, I um, want to thank you all so much for your time and I want to encourage everyone, um, if you are local, come September, please come visit the Greenway. We are open, we are following um, a strict regimen of disinfecting surfaces and making the, the public spaces safe. Um, you can patronize Chinatown businesses, you can get some food, you can come to the park, enjoy a meal, um, and we would just ask you to uh, maintain appropriate physical distancing and public health recommendations. Um, the play cubes are open, the fountains are running, um, it's summer uh, and, and outdoor spaces are wonderful spaces to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And um, 
We're so excited for this piece to go up. Um, even amidst a pandemic, it seems like this time, perhaps even more so, is a time to celebrate community, to acknowledge community power and resilience and storytelling and story sharing, and to highlight this work in this space. Um, if you are not in Boston, we'll have a lot of information on our website come September about this piece. Um, and we'll look forward to sharing it with you virtually then. Um, so for now, uh, a virtual round of applause to our amazing panelists. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, it's really been a pleasure to have you here with us. And thank you all for coming and participating and asking such incredible questions. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Sheila. Thank you. Don't thank wait you. until September. Chinatown is open. <laughs> <laughs> And the town's always open. <laughs>